Hello everyone, Chris here from All Things Air Rifles and Pistols UK. Uh, you can find us on Facebook if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, thanks a lot for uh, for being a part of the group. So we're here today with the Crowd Puncher Breaker Mark II. Uh, Mike Sabs from uh, Sports Guns has kindly sent it over for a review to see what I think of it and let um, everyone in the group know. Nice colourful box, nice bit of info on the front of it. In the box, as well as the rifle, you get two magazines. Um, in 2 2, they are 12 shot, in 177, they are 14 shot. You get uh, your fill probe with a couple of spare o rings, or I did in this one anyway, um, and you get an Allen key to take the stock off for general wipe down maintenance and, and what have you. Here's the rifle, anyway. Looks quite smart. Sorry about the backdrop, the uh, studio is currently under construction. Um, nice weight to it, feels nice and balanced. Yeah, quite like it. I thought the uh, stock was going to feel a little bit cheaper, obviously. For the money it's a sub £500 bulk up and there isn't many of them out there. The stock is hollow but it does feel quite well made and it's got a few few bits about it. Um, I'll go into that in a second. So, um, 73 centimetres long and weighs 3.45 kilograms. The air cylinder on it is 230cc and um, crowd claim that you get 120 shots per fill. I don't usually run, run my rifles right down to need a, a refill anyway. Uh, I usually shoot what I need to shoot um, and fill it up the next time I'm going out or fill it back up there and then. Uh, I believe the Mark, from the Mark 1 it's been vastly improved, the hammer system and the valve system. I won't go into too much detail about that uh, because I'm just going to give you a user friendly overview of the Mark 2 and what's an offer for you right now for your money. Um, so the as I say there's a few improvements but we won't go into too much about it. Um, I'm going to put on it a BSA VC silencer uh, and I'm going to use a Nico Sterling Mountmaster 3-9 by 50 AO. Um, I'll just give you an overview of the rifle front to back before we go into the next part of the video. So rubber butt pads on the end, unfortunately it's not adjustable but I usually change my butt pads anyway. Uh, you get an adjustable cheek piece made out of the uh, same material as the stock manual safety and a side cocking lever your magazine is slot in here and we go from right to left and on the back of the magazine there's a little ridge just to keep your magazines in place uh, power adjuster it goes from eight and a half foot pounds up to eleven and a half ish uh, under the uk legal limit um, you've got a weaver rail and a half inch UNF thread on the end of the barrel that comes with a muzzle brake but you can put most of your um, sought after silencers like your, your HWs and your hubbits and what have you. Um, just on the end of the air cylinder is a pressure gauge, very handy. Back to the stock, on the end of the stock you've got a little compartment which is very handy, obviously you get two magazines so you can pop your spare magazine in there and just under the fore end is a threaded piece to put a weaver um, rail on there to put your like your atlas style bipods and what have you and just under the pistol uh, just under the grip is your hole for the allen key to slot in to take the stock oops for your general maintenance um, so next up what we're going to do hopefully is get down to Alzu if the weather stays on our side uh, and I'm going to get you onto my permission as well to give you a, no, a good idea of what it's like to be uh, to be carrying it around with your weight wise and, and what have you so thanks a lot for tuning in and we're going to be as I say down at Alzu next thanks a lot guys
Thanks to everyone who have just gone up to me permission with the Kral. Um, we're going to be up here for a couple of hours, last few hours of light. Uh, we're going to have a, give it a good go round. 70 acres of horse stables tonight, so a good bit of walking around. So I'll have loads of feedback for you later on, on uh, you know, what it's like to carry round in the field, which uh, most of you in the group will be uh, will be taking it round in the field with you. Uh, so we'll see what it's like weight-wise. And I'll catch up with you in about half an hour. One thing I've definitely found uh, a lot easier about the Kral compared to being up here with my R10 is getting over the fence. It's uh, a lot easier than having a longer rifle. I'll just show you. I can actually do it very easily with no hands. Usually I'm all over the place with my R10 with it being a little bit longer. I don't want to bang the barrel on the, uh, on the top piece of wood as I'm climbing over, which I have accidentally done in the past. I'm a little bit short, so... You know those things happen but easy to get over the fence with with it being a uh, nice and small compact rifle hello everyone just checking in again um we're about an hour and 20 minutes into my trip into the permission tonight still carrying the crown rounds with no problems as you can see it's no sling on it I'm carrying it round just in my hands I thought I'd get the camera back out to let you know how I've been getting on. Um, I'm just going to stop here before we move into the next paddock because I know there's quite a bit of activity up ahead. So, like I say, we've been out for about an hour and 20 minutes now with the Kral. It, um, it's really light. I'm, I'm, my arms are usually dead if I'm carrying my rifle round my R10 without the sling. So, uh, it's only 3.45 kilograms. Really nice and comfortable to carry round with it being a bullpup. Nice and compact, fixed in your arms really well to be uh, to be walking around and staying quiet as I should be up here. I'm making a little bit more noise than I should but I did want to give you a bit of a different review on a new rifle as opposed to uh, a full one at home unboxing and going through all the ins and outs of the rifle. Um, brilliant to carry around with me up to now. I've absolutely loved it. If I was in the market for a PCP rifle for about £500 or uh, a bullpup and I was on a bit of a budget, I'd 100% be considering this rifle. Um, so we will have a round up back at home after the end of my trip and I'll give you uh, my overall opinion on the Kral, what I think of it and any bits that I've missed off earlier in the review. So thanks for watching and I'll see you back at home. So thanks a lot for staying with me. Um, quick round up on the Kral. So we were down at Alzout, I tried a few different pellets out, uh, it doesn't really like the cheaper end of the spectrum, RWS um, and Webley Acupels, uh, settled on JSB as you can see in the photo earlier on um, and the video, I've got a really good group of less than a one pence piece. Um, I'm in the market for a bullpup myself, I haven't got a great deal of money and for under, five, under £500 I'm absolutely made up with it so I think I'll definitely be going for a crowd. Um, thanks a lot for Mike to send it over. Uh, I primarily shoot um, on my permission doing pest controls and it was carrying it round, it was brilliant and it was really versatile. It was um, nice and light to shoulder while I'm walking, standing, uh, obviously spotting rabbits a bit further down uh, towards the 100 yards mark and it done the job really, really well. So I'm absolutely made up with it and I just wanted to give you an overall opinion, so they definitely fixed the problems from the Mark 1 I think, in my opinion. I got really good groupings from it straight away, it was really comfortable, really light, got on really well with it. I would give it an overall score of about um, 8 out of 10. So thanks a lot for watching, as I say you can find us on Facebook, I'll put links in the description to the Sports Guns page and website, also the Facebook page. and. Hopefully speak to you on the Facebook group. Thanks a lot, guys.